Joshua Letterberg, as a graduate student in Edward Tatum's lab after reading Avery's paper on transforming ability of DNA, became very excited by the possibilities that how the DNA gets from one bacterium to another. One possibility was that the bacteria mate and physically exchange DNA. He got mutant bacteria, E. coli, from Edward Tatum. E. coli can normally synthesize all the nutrients it needs. It has enzymes that bind and convert precursor molecules into essential nutrients like amino acids methionine, proline, and threonine, as well as the vitamin biotin. The mutant strains were unable to synthesize some of these nutrients. Like, mutant 1 had two genetic mutations, met negative and bionegative, which made it unable to synthesize the amino acid methionine or the vitamin biotin. It was still able to make all the other amino acids and vitamins. On the other hand, mutant 2 had two genetic mutations, pro-negative and THR-negative, which made it unable to synthesize the amino acids proline or threonine. It could make all the other amino acids and vitamins. These mutant strains can grow on culture plates if the right supplements are added to the media. Since, mutant 1 could make what mutant 2 needed, and vice versa. He used these two mutants to test for genetic exchange. First, he mixed the two mutant strains and grew them together in culture medium containing all four supplements. After the two strains had grown together for some time, he spread them onto a culture plate with no supplements and let them grow. With no supplements on culture plate, any cell that survives must have all the genes needed to make all four nutrients. The survivors would reproduce and become a visible colony on the plate. A few bacterial colonies had grown on the unsupplemented plate. The only way that any bacteria could grow on unsupplemented plate was if one mutant had donated a copy of its genes to the other. Joshua Letterberg calculated that this exchange occurred in about one in every 10 million bacteria grown together in the flask. He named this process of gene exchange, conjugation, and believed it had to occur through direct contact between bacteria. Later, William Hayes found that conjugation always occurs between bacteria of different mating types, the bacterial equivalent of sexes. First, a bridge, or pilus, forms between the two bacteria. Then, genes move through the pilus from the positive mating type to a negative mating type. Gene transfer can be interrupted by shaking bacterial cultures using a blender. The agitation breaks the pilus, which connects the mating pair. By interrupting mating at increasing time intervals, more genes are transferred. The order of some bacterial genes was determined using this method. These experiments show that bacteria mate and exchange genes, much like plants and animals. This convinced scientists that bacteria can be used as models for looking at gene function in higher organisms. In bacterial conjugation, the transfer of genes is directional from a donor to a recipient. The donor, Male has a fertility factor, F+, plus, that is itself heritable. Recipient females do not have the F factor and are F-. Minus. Bacteria that have the F factor make the pili needed for conjugation. The F factor is a piece of DNA that can exist on its own in the cytoplasm. This DNA can also be integrated into the bacterial genome through recombination. When the F factor is integrated into the bacterial chromosome, it can still act as a donor in a conjugation cross. These integrated strains are called HFR. There was debate about whether bacteria had genes and what attributes they may have in common with higher life forms during 1930s and 40s. This debate was settled when it was discovered that bacteria have sex. During the process of conjugation, genes are exchanged through a mating channel that links two bacteria.